Heavenly Father, speak to us this day, the feast of the light of the world, that we too, as we have been encouraged, become lights of the world. That we extend the nature, character, attitude, actions, and countenance of our Lord Jesus Christ, day in and day out to all men. Let our religion not be in vain. Let our worship not be self-centered. But let us begin this very day to intentionally let our light shine. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the life-giving Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And the children are dismissed at this time. Grace and peace, everyone. Are you progressing? Or are you the same? Are you satisfied with your progress? Do others see a change? You know, sometimes we we think backwards from God. We think completely backwards from God. God thinks different than us. So we have to be renewed in our mind in order to progress. We talk about letting the light shine and here this blind man comes and he's born blind and immediately the Pharisees say, our God is Moses, our father is Moses. We do what Moses said. And Moses represents the law. They are legalistic in their assessment of this man. They are completely legalistic. They assess him from a natural perspective. It's easy to judge one another and assess each other from a natural perspective, isn't it? We have memories. We recall different things that happened to us and things people said to us and Those closest to us, we have issues sometimes because although we want our Father to be Christ, He still is Moses. To bring people under a legal assessment of why they are the way they are. And so Jesus says, I'm going to heal the man, but I'm not going to heal him segregated from his participation. (laughs) Because Jesus could have just waved his hand, he could have clapped his finger, he could have uh, clapped his hand, snapped his fingers and said, see. But that isn't how change happens. We want a religion that will change us without our investment to change. And so we have to pervert scripture and say, well, if God hasn't changed me, this is the way I am, accept me this way. You've heard it. I mean, there was even, it's all God message. It's all God. It's all God that I do this or I do that. But we see in this scripture that God says, I will heal you, but you must be involved. He said, I'm going to give you your sight back. So he spits divinity into legalism. He takes divine spittle and mixes it with dust, which is what man is formed from but not created from. He takes the physical and he mingles the divine with it. And he says to the man... Go and wash at the pool Siloam, which is sent, or to be sent. See, here's the problem. You won't change till you're ready to be sent. Because if you can stay where you're at, you don't have to change. 
And here's the problem. Some of us are in the same place spiritually we were five years ago. We're not being discipled. We don't disciple. We look the same. We talk the same. We still retain the image and the character and the projection of what we used to be. Because we're afraid if I make a physical change, I'm legalistic then. Hmm. Why is it my beliefs are different, but my, but my attitude and my life is indifferent? Why am I still addicted? Why am I still depressed? Why am I still in debt? Why am I still paranoid of how, how people view me? Why do I still think people are out to get me? I have a different belief system, but there's no visible change. This man needed a visible change. And so God, are you all here today? I'm giving you, this is what repentance is about. It's a, you know, we can, we, we become too philosophical as Christians. We become all about, well, revelation this, revelation that. Where is the change? I don't care how deep the revelation gets. I don't care how deep the revelation gets. If you're still broke, busted, and disgusted, what good is your religion? If you're still paranoid, if you walk in here and walk out there and you have the same language with your coworkers and your fellow students and everybody else that you had five years ago, what, what's, up, what's up with that? What's up with that? Huh? Really, uh, it doesn't make any sense. I'm gonna, are y'all ready to go deeper? Because here is what happens, is that suddenly the message of grace comes and says, you can't expect, that you can't disciple somebody and tell them they should do something different because now you brought them under bondage. If you're not receiving instruction from somebody more mature than you, you're not growing in God. I, I teach the young men I mentor, you know who they are, the ones closest to me. Listen to the wisdom of your elders. You, should, you better have more sense. You better have more sense next year than you have today. And you should have more sense today than you did last year. Well, because I'm the head of the house or because I'm the manager of the business or the owner of the business or because I have a position of authority, I don't have to change. You have to change more than everybody else. Because to assume leadership... In any level, whether it be the husband of a wife or a father of a children or mother of a children, you have to, be, have to engage in more self-examination than somebody less mature than you. Let's get back to the word. Go wash. In other words, I'm going to spit on your problem because your problem is a natural problem. But you've got to go remove the natural thing. When you remove the natural thing. Now, I used to criticize, Father, people who would come in. Do you remember when the church went through this style? Oh, Jesus is my Lord, but I still want to dress like a thug. I still want to look like I looked when I was in bondage. Be because it makes people think something has changed, but it hasn't changed. If my attitude, my action, and my language isn't changing. In other words, what am I in the natural intentionally doing to wash off the limitation? You know what it takes? Blessing those who curse you. Serving. Making a commitment. Making a commitment to something. And, and you know, I want to say this. Jesus said to them, 
he said to the Pharisees, and it wasn't in today's scriptures, he said, if you were blind, you would have no sin. He's saying, look, this man's blind because this man can't assess everything by the natural. He has to trust by what, what he cannot control. We use faith to try to control things to ensure what we want. And then we get what we ask for and we're more miserable than before we got what we asked for. I want to be married. I, oh my God, I'm married now. I don't want to be married. I want that promotion. Give me that promotion. Then I get all the garbage that comes with the promotion. The thing I prayed for, I want out of now. Why? Because we never get to the washing. We never get to the pool of scent. It's all about make my life better, God, by faith. And here's the problem. We stay sons of Moses, but we never become sons of Abraham. Because Abraham has to go without a blueprint. <laughs> Are y'all mad at me or something? Abraham has to go without a plan. See, people who are blind to God need a plan to ensure an outcome. But if you want to be free from and that's sin, that's using the plan to get what you desire. And here is the problem with the church. And I don't want to be demean or belittle the church. I could really care less what liturgy or what style of vestments you wear. If you're not transforming, if you're not changing, you're still blind. I remember when I first came to God. My pastor gave me instruction every week of something I needed to change in my life. And a lot of it I didn't like. One of them was... I couldn't stay living in the condition I was in. I need to get my own place. He said, you, you can't grow in God and, 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 and retain this luxury that makes you feel good. See, we're at the point now, see, because I'm going to say this. God can't change you without your cooperation. He, you're not going to wake up someday and suddenly say, I'm changed. You're going to have to go wash some mud off. You might have to change. Now, oh, I'm going to tread on some thin ice right now. Oh, I, can I, I'm going to get on some thin ice. and I'm not, I know the world is listening to it. But I'm going to get on some thin ice. You might have to change the way you dress, just so when you look in the mirror, you can see you've changed. That doesn't save you. That doesn't make you holy. It just reminds you. Sometimes you just have to get away from the things we hold on to and say, this is me, man. No. In baptism, we die to me and we raise to him. And I wish it was as simple as getting a new sport coat <laughs> or a new hairdo. But sometimes we have to go do the natural thing, first the natural, then the spiritual. We have to do the natural thing first to grab hold of the spiritual thing. We want the spiritual thing to override the natural thing. Well, why do people still treat me like I'm some type of whatever? Because you still look like one. You still talk like one. You still think like one. You still 
project that. Oh, I'm going to get letters on this. I, I just, I'm glad. I feel it now. It's okay. Because, uh, look, I can tell you right now, it, we, can, we can take it to extremes. Tattoos, piercings, sagger pants, long hairs, bald heads, tat, what we take. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying that changing that in and of itself doesn't change anybody. It's when I say that's not me anymore. I'm going to go wash that off. Blindness is not me anymore. I'm not doing it to be holy. I'm not doing it to be accepted. I'm doing it so when I look in the mirror, I can say, I've washed at the pool asylum. It may be how, what attitude you come home from work with. Maybe that's what needs to be washed off. Or what attitude you've had all day because you stayed at home. And didn't get to go do what you wanted to do. Maybe that needs to wash off. Now I'm talking practical, aren't I? And this is why we don't want discipleship. Because a disciple, a mentor might tell you, you need to do something that's uncomfortable for your bondage to your old identity that you need to cut off and get rid of. And then you know what the first cry is? Legalism. Control. Manipulation. He told the man, he said, I've defended you in front of everybody. I've said that you were not sinful, that you were born this way, that God may be glorified in your limitation Moses will ana analyze you in the natural. Father Abraham will set you free. I'm going to set you free. I'm going to spit in mud. And I'm going to tell you, now, what did this man have to do after he got the mud on his eyes? Jesus didn't hold his hand and walk him to the pool of Siloam. He had to find his way. Turn to your neighbor and say, you need to find your way. So you can wash off the mud. I'm going to have another conference now. The wash off the mud conference. Make intentional changes in the natural. So dramatic that when you look at yourself, you don't recognize yourself anymore. Because, see, they didn't recognize the man anymore, but he said, I am him, even though you don't recognize me. <laughs> I could go, well, anyway. So let's talk. What is sin? To transgress, he said, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But now that you say, I see, now that you say, I'm in control, I know the plan. When any, whenever you say, I know the plan, you're blind. And you've set yourself up for misery. Because no man knows what tomorrow brings. Give us this day our daily bread. I don't care what your plan is. Your big, grandiose dream about life. The only life you have is the life you have right now sitting in that chair. That's the only life you have. Make all your plans. God can blow them up in one day. Plan for retirement and the day you retire you could be paralyzed. Have a massive stroke. Are you living your life now? Well, let me put it a different way. Are you washing the mud off? Uh, so what is sinfulness? Let's define it so everybody knows it because we, we all need to understand what it is. And then I'll explain to you. Once you understand what sinfulness is, you'll understand why you need this Eucharist. Are you here? Watch. To transgress is to do what should is to do what we should not have done. Or conversely to fall short and not do what we should have done. That's transgression. I didn't do what I should have done. Or and this this boils down to where sinfulness lies. The most basic element of sinfulness is behavioral but can also be mental. 
It's perceptual. Sin is perceptual. We dress, you know, we've learned how to dress ourselves up, say the praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How you doing, brother? God bless you, brother. Praying for you, brother. And in our mind, be totally contrary to that. It's not just behavioral. It's mental. Sinfulness can also be seen as the element in human nature. Everybody say human nature. Paul told the Corinthians, you're acting like mere humans again. And so sin is a human nature trait. Now, I would like to believe the day that I confess Jesus and wash in that baptism, that all the urges, passions, and desires of my sinful nature would go away. Like my lust. Okay, well, that doesn't, you can't click that button. So let's try this. My anger. Oh, my frustration. My fear. My impatience. My unforgiveness. My paranoia. Paranoia is rooted in sin. It's caring more about what people think of you than what God thinks of you. What is it? It's being afraid of the process of God. It's being afraid that doing the hard thing, the hard thing that washes the mud off, might be the thing that opens my eyes. Maybe that's what opens my eyes, is the hard thing that I'm totally uncomfortable with. Stubbornness. That's muddy. That's muddy. Let's finish up. It is more about, listen to this. Sin is a human nature trait to a degree. It is a trait of human behavior. It is more about who, it is more about who we are than about what we do. Sin is more about who we are than what we do. Paul said it, in my flesh there's no good thing. He said, in this human nature there's a virus. Now, you can have a virus, but it hasn't blown up into a sickness yet. You can have the measles in you, and you haven't got bumps yet. (laughs) You know, if we just prayed a prayer and we become perfect let me let me explain the divine parent god wants divine children some of y'all read my blog on that but i'm going to help you here why didn't god make us flawless he could he could have made us flawless and morally perfect and we'll take a little baby like talon or a little child like our grandchildren and we'll hold them and say aren't they perfect And we think they're perfect. They're just perfectible. But to be perfectible, there has to be engagement. Let's bypass the engagement, man. Let's bypass the daily, weekly process and just say, when God looks at me, he sees Jesus. This is true. When God looks at you, he sees Jesus. My question is, when other people look at you, what do they see? Because they aren't seeing you the same way God sees you. (laughs) So God may see you perfect. The Bible even tells us, be perfect as your father is perfect. I think it's right to demand perfection. I think there comes a point. I can say this. I can say, Father, when you hear me use foul language, when I'm frustrated, call me on that. That isn't going to help me. What's going to help me is when I call myself on it and say, that ain't you. Well, hallelujah. But some of us really were in love We're in love with our old image. Performance-wise, image-wise. I'm in trouble here. I'm in trouble. We're in love with our old image. 
We, we have an affair and an affection with how it used to be. And we take all of the garbage of the past and we remember just the parts that really fed us egotistically and we think that's our identity. Success, popularity, wealth, influence, youth. I got news for you. Look in the mirror for real. For real. Look there. For real. Don't look at yourself and go, yeah, but I remember how I... No, look there now and see what you look like. Get completely naked. Get a mirror and look at the backside. Look from the side. Don't live in this fantasy world. That's in a natural sense. I, I feel like I need to stop. The mental sin is denial of my reality. The mental sin is my de denial of my true reality of where I'm really, truly, truly, truly at right now. And you know what we have to do when we're in denial of our reality? We have to dream lofty dreams that are not reality either. This is a handful of people in here. I, I gave up on years ago having the image I have to preach to the masses. If I could give five or six people in a lifetime who want to change, I've done my job as a priest. Because in order to get crowds and have all of the, the hoop and holler, I'm going to have to gloss over the thing that changes us. Are you all still with me here? Watch this. I'm, a, I'm about done. I, I, this went no way the direction I thought it would go. But I, want, I need to thank Deacon Severus because right when he, the little light of mine shine song came on, the whole thing opened up in the heavens for me. Totally opposite of what I thought was going to happen when we threw that little light little shine thing up there. It was like, I think I might get depressed now. And the thing I thought that might kill the spirit opened up everything for me. Because I chose intentionally to not assess it in the natural. You know what? I just don't understand why anybody would do something that made them miserable over and over and over. It makes no sense when you think about it. Why would you stay in a job that depresses you and frustrates you? For money? To uphold an old image that is not reality? Now, I'm not telling you to go quit your job. I'm telling you to change. Change, 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 change. <laughs> Sorry, Lord. Now watch this. It may manifest itself sin in acts, but it cannot be reduced down to acts. This is very powerful. For even if sin does not manifest or generate misconduct or misdeeds, it is there. I'm not a sin conscious preacher or believer. I'm not sin con I am Christ conscious. But I'm telling you what, in this body, in this physical realm, well, brother, I'm divine. Well, then go without any sleep and never tell me you're tired ever again. If you're so divine, I don't want to ever hear, I need rest or a vacation. If that's how divine we are now. In this, Jesus knew this. He said, the Bible says, if you say you're without sin, you make God a liar. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But here's the, the shift. Going to the pool of Siloam is deciding to not let my human nature control me. But let the divine nature control me. Which means I might have to make some decisions that make my human nature very 
uncomfortable in order for me to buy into the fact I'm a son of God. That's what suffering's about. Does everybody get this? I feel like having a question and answer period. What is it you know you should do, but you won't do? Not just change specifically. Specifically, what do you know you should do but won't do? I can tell you, you'll never have to pray about it. You won't have to pray about why you don't do it. You don't trust God. You don't trust God that if you do the uncomfortable thing, he will wrap his loving arms of grace around you and walk through with you. Though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, yet he will be with you. It's so much easier to say, here's what's wrong with everything and everybody around me. Because then I never have to deal with change. Changing me. Rebirth, regeneration, renewal, anything. Because I have propped up this image for so long, I'm addicted to an old image that isn't even me anymore. And that type of addiction is no different than a drug addiction. You want to be off it, but you can't. Because it feeds the natural. It feeds my natural security system. Stand to your feet with me this morning. <laughs> Listen, beloved. Our sins have been forgiven us past, present, and future. Say this with me. My sins have been forgiven past, present, and future. But my human nature is infected Contrary to preaching, God showed me something when I was studying this last night. How many of you know Peter walked on the water? Peter didn't walk on the water by himself. He walked to where Christ was. And the minute he got his eyes off of the communion and engagement with Christ, he drowned. We can turn Christianity into all kinds of carnal, beneficial things if we want to, but the truth is, are you changing? So bow your heads for a moment and let's say this together. Lord, you have made us sons of God. We're not perfect, but I am perfectable. You've made me a partaker of your divine nature and given me the power to overcome sin. You've given me the divine nature that I may go wash the human nature into perfection. Lord, put the mud on our eyes so we'd stop looking at the natural and find our way to the pool of Siloam, the pool of scent, and be washed in Jesus' name. Now I got a prophetic picture when we prayed that prayer. I want you for a moment to close your eyes and envision this blind man who has never ever seen 
finding his way to the pool siloam. The Lord showed me something. He knew where it was and he knew how to get there. The problem is he's going now with mud on his eyes, which tells the world he's engaged with a change that's about to happen. So Father, I just bless your people now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit to fearlessly embrace the process of being sent to wash in Jesus' name. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us profess our faith in Almighty God. I believe in one God. Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke through the prophets. I believe in one holy, universal, and apostolic church, acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and look for the resurrection of the dead and the life to come. Amen. Jesus welcomes all of us to his table, so we offer communion. To everyone who has been water baptized and receives Jesus as Lord by faith, amen. The altar guild is bringing forth the gifts of bread and wine this morning. Let's thank God for their service. This is a secret service, amen, a hidden work. Oftentimes their, their work isn't visible to us because they're working before we get here and after we leave, Amen and working behind closed doors. That's where true Christian work happens. It doesn't happen on the platforms in front of everybody else. It happens when no one's watching. Amen. True Christians are Christians whether the light's on or whether the light's off. Amen. Every point your hands forward as we... Uh, as we bless this, they represent those, even Deanna and Felicia, Mia, so many who are part of this, this guild and this team. Um, we simply could not do what we do without their efforts. So we bless you now. As we're reminded as we stand in these white robes that he has made us pure. Not by our own effort, but because He is who He is. We bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, the life-giving Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Upward where Christ sits, on the right hand of God the Father. Let our thoughts, minds, and hearts be at this hour. They are with the Lord God. Let us give thanks to the Lord in awe. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 